I'm Tiger Height, and I'm here to make WWE SmackDown and Pro Wrestling Majestic again. Overall, it was a pretty solid show. Promos were good, the matches were fine, and things did progress somewhat. It wasn't 100% throwaway, but at the same time, it wasn't one of those go out of your way and watch it SmackDowns. And of course, we started out with John Cena. New look. He, I don't know why they edited him to look like that, but he looks like he's 30 years older than he actually is. I have no idea what it was. The person who did the color contrast here was just having a ball, and it just does not look good. Anyway, Cena cut a promo. It was fine. Then Jimmy Uso comes out to new music. I can dig it. But what I can't dig is the fact that Jimmy Uso, they're trying to put him over as this new big heel... At, because, you know, obviously Jay is gone, and Roman just kind of shows up whenever. But then he gets AA'd by a literal part-timer. Why did you have to do that? If you, want to t if you want anybody to take him seriously, I think Jimmy Uso should have gotten the advantage over on Cena. It was the same thing with Grayson Waller. Grayson Waller got hurt a little bit from John Cena and him going back and forth at, I think it was Money in the Bank. Eh. I'll give it an Orange Cassidy thumbs up because the back and forth between them was okay. Up next was the LWO Santos Escobar and Rey Mysterio taking on said Grayson Waller and Austin Theory. This was a fun match overall. Back and forth was good, there were some rivalries here, and I think the right people won in this circumstance. Why do they have to pin Santos Escobar? I have no idea. Maybe they're trying to protect a literal WWE Hall of Famer? You could have had a pin with some shenanigans or something. But I still do believe the right people won here. And I did like the match overall. I'll give it an Orange Cassidy thumbs up. But this whole thing with the United States Champions just stinted. It's not going anywhere. It's hitting this wall. Come on. Let's forward some sort of story. If Santos is going to betray Mysterio, you should have done something there. If one of these two are going to go for the United States Champion, they should have pinned the champion. Rey Mysterio does not need to be protected. It's Rey Mysterio. Now, I did like this, but they could have made it better. And let me explain. Bobby Lashley comes out to his general music. Okay, it's fine. It works as a heel and as a babyface. But the street profits. I like the look. I like the aggression. I like the style. But could we have changed up something more here? It's the same entrance. It's the same theme song. This is important. If you're going to present them differently, if you're going to give them a new, more aggressive in-ring style, if you're going to change these things about the Street Profits, you have to change the theme. The rest of the presentation has to go. Change all of it or change none of it. It's all or nothing. Presentation is important here. It's pro wrestling. And Bobby Lashley put everybody on notice. They're wanting to go for champions. They are wanting to take over the company. And it's starting to look a little, you know, um, her business. And I don't mind it. I'll give it a full thumbs up. They cut a good promo too. Bobby Lashley has just gotten so much better at promo. Is he the best? No. Is MVP a lot better? You're damn right. Where's MVP and Omas? Are they not free agents? Am I crazy here? Now, I did like the little interaction there with Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn coming out before Bobby Lashley and the Street Profits walked to the back. I liked that little tease there. That led into our next match, which was Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn taking on Cruz El Toro and Joaquin Wilde of the LWO. And this means that the LWO lost twice. All four members lost, clean, middle of the ring, no shenanigans. This one I could have been okay with. But the other one has more of a story. They're just promoting Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn taking on Judgment Day. And I don't see a problem with it. I'll give it an Orange Cassidy thumbs up because the match was fine. Okay, this felt different. This felt raw. It felt real. Now, I'm not sure, but either these two hate each other's guts or they are just that good at this. The Miz and LA Knight had a freaking awesome back and forth. This was great. A match that had a little bit of heat just got cranked up, and I am all for it. LA Knight talked about his struggles, him working 12 years, starting in a reality TV show, and getting eliminated, where The Miz took three years to get to WWE, 
it is still there. I really like it. These two are very similar, and I like that contrast, and them bringing it up just makes it feel different, and I am all for that. There was a skull-crushing finale on LA, but LA pretty much got up immediately, so I'm not a big fan of that, but I like the attacks. I like this. This was good, and it gets a full thumbs up. Was it LA Knight's best promo? Was it The Miz's best promo? No, but they did put a lot of emotion into it, and I really liked it. Up next was Bayley versus Shotzi. In all of this, it's a random SmackDown match. Of the whole shaving of the head thing, of the design choice difference here with Shotzi, you have it on SmackDown. You literally have a pay-per-view. Why didn't you do this at the effing pay-per-view? Or premium live event. Because in all technicalities, it's not a pay-per-view. Also, you give Shotzi this new look. And I dig it. Number one, I'm not a huge fan of the spiked hair. I think she should have kept it shorter. Still buzz cut. It's fine. I actually think she looks good. I don't know. I dig the alternate chicks. But everything else about her is the same. Can we stop doing this? You give her new gear. You give her the shaved head look. And I know that was her choice, but... And, and you also gave her a new attitude. Where was that aggressive Shotzi trying to shave Bailey's head? Where was that? This is the same Shotzi that we've seen. Why bother? Same theme song. The tank. The everything. I think Shotzi, it would have been a lot better if she came out running at Bailey and beating her up. Why is she doing a full entrance to a woman that you supposedly hate? How does that make sense to anybody? Presentation, presentation, presentation. It is so important, especially when you're trying to produce a television show. It's a television show. Characters are important. This, this weird mesh of the old and the new Shotzi bothers me. It shouldn't bother me this much, but goddamn, as somebody who has done theater for years, as somebody who has booked wrestling in the past, when like way back in the day, this was ridiculous. By the way, I was like 20 when that happened, and there was a really small promotion in Michigan. Also, somebody who's been watching wrestling for years, and a psychology major, you really effing think that this mesh is a good idea? No. This, to me, looks like you just gave the fuck up. And then Charlotte goes out and immediately botches. I'm not sure if she was supposed to kick the title from EO Sky. I'm not sure if she was supposed to kick EO Sky in general, but it looked really weird. I have no idea what's going on with Charlotte, but this is another very big botch. Anyway, Shotzi won with that weird DDT thing. Are we going to continue that rivalry? Did we just insert Charlotte Flair into it because reasons... Shotzi can stand on her own. I have no idea why they did that. And with all of that being said, it was just a match and a disappointing match with a rivalry. So I have to give it a thumbs down. They worked hard, but there was so many things around it that just made it look weak. Then we get to our main event. This was basically made during the show backstage segment where Solo helped Jimmy after Jimmy confronted AJ. It was AJ Styles, Solo Sokoa. I liked it. It was a fun main event. But with Jimmy Uso helping Solo and then throwing up the one... Is, does he want to return to the bloodline? What? Huh? Do you know what you want to do with this bloodline thing anymore? I mean, what I would have done is that Jimmy is trying to get Solo away from the bloodline. You would think that would be the case, right? It's just hard to do this thing anymore when the two strongest people in the actual storyline are not there. And I'm not taking anything away from Jimmy, but Jay was really carrying a lot of what we've been seeing. He was the main conflict. It was a Samoan spike after a distraction for Solo to win. I like the match. I'm going to give it an Orange Cassidy thumbs up. And that was SmackDown. Let me know what you thought in the comments either down below or right next to me over here. I want to have a conversation with you. Like the videos, share them with all your friends, stitch it and comment on it if you want to on TikTok and respond to it on YouTube if you want to do that as well. And as always, be majestic.